damn Kyle, you going off. Oh, hold on. Friedman. You need to leave. Bruh. What's good, y'all? It's your boy Cam back with a YouTube video, and today we're gonna be checking out Milton Friedman, uh, Lesson of the Pencil. Not exactly sure what that means, but I'm gonna find out today. But before the video starts, smash the like button right now, subscribe if you're new, cause we're posting every single day, man. If you guys want to check out another video by Milton Friedman, just let me know in the comment section. Uh, let's see if this is a uh, good. What does he mean by the less lesson of the pencil? Let's go. Get it, bro. What are we going to learn today? We need an understanding of the real nature of freedom, economic and political, and the interrelationship between the two. We need really to have a greater understanding of the kind of system, the kind of principles that have enabled us to, to get this great achievement of the past 200 years. We need to understand how it is that a free market works to enable millions of people to cooperate peacefully together. I know no better way to bring this out than by a very simple example that I owe to an old friend of mine, Leonard Reed, who once wrote a little article called I the Pencil. This is the only prop I have for this TV show. Okay. As you can see, it's a plain yellow pencil. Yep. Said Leonard Reed in his article, you know, it's a funny thing, he said, there's nobody in the world who knows how to make a pencil. Now, that seems like a silly thing to say, isn't it? This is just the most obvious thing. It's only a piece of wood with a, something black in the middle and a little red tip at the end. <laughs> what do you mean nobody knows how to make a pencil? Well, suppose you were to start to set out to make a pencil. First of all, you have to get some wood, don't you? Where do you get the wood? You have to go to the Pacific Northwest, probably, and cut down some trees. Mm. How do you cut down some trees? You have to have some saws to cut it with. Where do you get the saws? You have to have some steel. Where do you get the steel? You have to have a steel mill. Mm -hmm. In order to have the steel mill, you have to get the iron ore, and you can add all the rest. <laughs> Dang. So in order to know how to make a pencil, you would have to know everything there is to know about how to start from iron ore and coal and get iron and convert it into saws and cut down trees. But that's only the beginning. Yeah. This black stuff in the middle that we call lead isn't lead. It's graphite, It's right? graphite, I think. I'm not absolutely sure. And I am told it comes from some mines in South America. So in order to get that black stuff in between, you would have to take a trip down to South America and know all about how to extract graphite from the mines in South America. Dang. Now this little red tip at the top, that's rubber. Where does it come from? I honestly don't well, know. Well, the major source of natural rubber is Malaya. That's quite another distance. And I don't know how many of you know that the rubber tree was not native to Malaysia. It was originally imported into Malaysia by private enterprises trying to make some money. And they transplanted it from somewhere in South America. I think it was Brazil, but I don't guarantee that. And they brought it over into Malaysia and established the, pla uh, the plantations there and got this rubber. So somehow or other, in order to make a pencil, you'd have to know about the rubber. Now there's a little brass tip around here, and I've run out of my own technological knowledge. I don't have the slightest idea where that comes from, <laughs> though there are probably people in the audience who could tell us. Nobody knows how to make a pencil. Yeah. But the miracle of this pencil isn't that nobody knows how to make it. The miracle of the pencil is how did it get made? Who told that fellow over in Malaya to tap his tree and send a little bit of rubber over here to put at the end of this pencil so I could have a pencil in my hand? Mm. What's happened? What is it that has enabled this little elementary transaction to take place? I'm not sure what the price of this thing is nowadays. These things change so fast. A few cents, maybe? <laughs> when I first started hearing about this story, it was a nickel pencil, but that won't do anymore probably two for a quarter or 15 cents a piece. <laughs> but what happens when I go down the store and I put down a quarter and get two of these pencils? I am trading with thousands of people all over the world 
people in Washington State who are cutting down trees, people in South America, people over in Malaya, I'm making a deal with them. Mm -hmm. I'm saying to them indirectly, I'll give you two minutes of talk for two of these pencils. In <laughs> fact, I, I, I hope I've underpriced myself in that <laughs> calculation. Now, how is that brought about? Is there some commissar sitting in some central office who is sending out orders to these people in Malaya, to these people in South America, to the people in Washington? How is it that they are led to cooperate with one another? That's the miracle of the price system. Because note, these thousands of people who have been led to engage in this simple transaction with me, not one of them has been forced to do it. Nobody has had a gun to his head. Mm -hmm. They've all done it. Why? Because each one of them thinks he's better off in this transaction. And somehow or other, I've done it because I think I'm better off. Everybody has benefited. There's been no central direction. These people who have cooperated with one another don't speak the same language. They're people of all different religions. They may hate one another in every respect. But this hasn't prevented them somehow or other from being led to cooperate together. It hasn't prevented some kind of a wonderful machinery from bringing together these various components all together into this little pencil. That's true. What is that machinery? What is it that has induced people to do this? How has it been brought about? That machinery is the price system. That machinery is what the story is all about. That machinery is what enabled the United States to develop as it did. Because it's this price system which has the great virtue that it doesn't require any central direction. It doesn't require any commissars. It doesn't require people to be able to talk the same language. It doesn't require to be, be, people to be of the same religion. In fact, the beauty of the price system is that when you buy this pencil, you have no idea the religion of the people who went into it, whose work went into it. That's true. When you buy your daily bread, you don't know whether the wheat was grown by a black man or a white man, by a Chinaman or an Indian or... Uh, anybody else. It's true. And as a result, the price system enables you to have cooperation among millions of people peacefully, cooperating on one little phase of their life while each one goes about his own business in respect of everything else. It works so well, it works so efficiently that ordinarily we're not aware of it. It's like the, uh, uh, your car. It never occurs to you what a complicated business it is until 3 o'clock in the morning on a dark road, it stops functioning. Yep. And then you suddenly realize it's a complicated mechanism. Yep. And it's the same way with the price system. So long as it is working, so long... Oh, that, was a, that was a really good way to put it. It's operating, so long as it's being, bringing people together. It doesn't even occur to you that it's this kind of a complicated mechanism. How is it that it achieves this bringing of people together? Fundamentally, at bottom, the essential, uh, the essential idea of the price mechanism is that both parties to a transaction can benefit, provided it is voluntary and not coerced. There's a terrible tendency, and most economic fallacies derive from that tendency, to think of everything as what the uh, game theorists have come to call a zero-sum game to think there's a fixed pie. And if I get more, you must get less. Mm. If somebody was able to make a fortune for himself, he must have done it by grinding under his heel the poor people because the pie is fixed and he takes a bigger part. The great insight behind the free market, the great insight of Adam Smith's great book, The Wealth of Nations, was that it is not a zero-sum game that it is possible for both people to afford to a transaction to benefit. And that this insight can be used to organize people's activities over a very wide area. It's very easy to see that principle operating if you think of, of two people under any circumstances making a voluntary deal. I'll give me, I'll trade my penknife for 
your roller skate. Clearly, that isn't a deal unless both people are better off. Yeah. It's much harder to see how that same principle is involved in the far-flung transactions that went into making this pencil. And yet the same principles are there. The price system operates in this way because it doesn't require orders. It operates in this way because it can transmit information in a very efficient way without any person having to send an order. Wow, man. This is a really intelligent dude, bro. I never, never thought of it that way. He put stuff in really good perspective, man. Like, I, like, I, never, I never thought of stuff like that. Like, like, I never sat here and thought about, like, what came into making a pencil. You got to do this. You got to do this. You got to go over here. I'm like, wow. When he was explaining, I was like, dang. You got to do more than just get wood and graphite. You got to figure out how to find some graphite. Figure out where to where to get it. How to my like like what? I like him. Uh, Milton Friedman. Um, you guys want me to check out more stuff by Milton? Man, let me know in the comment section below. And like, does he have any more speeches? I really like this speech. I want to check out more stuff, man. This was really cool. Um, but yeah. That's the end of the video, bro. If you enjoyed, like, comment, subscribe. I also like how he said, you don't know if it was a black man that made this pencil. Uh, you don't know if it was a, somebody's white. You don't know if it, uh, if it was an Asian. You don't know who it was. You just know you need a pencil. Um, that was facts, man. Uh, but yeah, that's the end of the video, bro. If you enjoyed, like, comment, subscribe. Let me know in the comments below how you felt about this video, man. And I'll see y'all in the next video. Peace.